Hello everyone, we will continue the topic authority check and in the last video, we started with a requirement and based upon that requirement, we made a copy of the already existing program. We have three database operation, insert, update, delete and yes, after that what we did we simply simply created the authorization object and authorization object class through SU21 transaction code. We have not created the authorization field because we are using the SAP already available authorization field that is ACTVT. And for this ACTVT, we have chosen the three permitted activities create, change, and delete because in our program, we have three database operation. Now, if I will come on to the steps as a part of authority check process. So first step, done. anyways, we have not created any authorization field. We are using whatever the next requirement I will take. In that, we will learn also how to create our own authorization field. Then I created the audit class. Yes. After that, we assign the authorization object to the authorization object class. And in the authorization object, we have the authorization field. So we have done with the first three steps. Now I will move on to fourth, fifth and sixth step. Now the most important point from a technical perspective, as a ABAP consultant, you should not do anything related to the fourth, fifth, and sixth step because that is there because this is totally, totally done by the SAP basis person or system administrator. And even you do not have the authorization in the projects for this particular transaction code because they are critical also. So what SAP basis person will do? Once you are done with the authorization object, just give the authorization object to the SAP basis person. What SAP basis person will do? SAP basis person will create a role using that transaction code PFCG. It's a humble request, yes. Do not go for these kinds of things because this is totally handled by SAP basis person and these are considered as one of the critical transaction code because this is all about roles authorizations. So whenever we will give the authorization object to the SAP basis person, SAP basis person will create a role using that transaction code PFCG. In that role, whatever the authorization object we provided, SAP basis person will assign to that role. And that role, the basis person will give to our user ID. So what SAP basis person will do for that particular auth object, SAP basis person will create a role that authorization object will be assigned to that role and that role will be assigned to us. These three activities completely, completely done by the SAP basis person. So it's a humble request. Do not do these kind of thing because they are considered as one of the most critical activities in the project and you do not have even rights also. Now, we will directly move on to the seventh step because as a technical person, your task is to write the code. Once you create the authorization field, authorization object, object class, your task is to just write the logic in the program and share the authorization object with the SAP basis person. So now we will learn how to write the logic which will make use of this authorization object. So what is our seventh step? Use authority check on authorization object in the program. So I will go for the program. And this is extremely important from a technical person, for a ABAP consultant, because without logic, 
our system will check. So we will write the logic. Now I will simply execute the program first and we will see where we need to write the code. Suppose whenever you are giving any order number and you are going for any database operation, if you do not have the authorization, you cannot do all these kinds of database operation. It means we need to validate and you all know whenever you want to validate where, where you need to write the logic, you need to write the logic in add selection screen event. So we will write the authorization code in the add selection screen event. And at the first level itself, we will do. Because if you do not have the authorization, why other logic has to execute? So firstly, I will write the logic as a part of insert database operation. So what is the keyword? The keyword is authority check. The keyword is authority check. Now, after authority check, the keyword is object also authority check object now i will give the name of the object which we created through su21 this is the authorization object which we created through su21 now i will simply simply pass the authorization field now what is the authorization field we will give through ID. So ID is the keyword which is used to pass the authorization field. We are using SAP standard authorization field. Yes, I will pass that also. ACT VT. Now we need to pass the value. We need to pass the value. So to pass the value, the keyword is field. Now, as a part of insert database operation or create database operation, we will go for which particular value? 0, 1. Because you all know 0, 1 is for add or create. Now, if this particular statement, whenever this statement will execute and it is giving the size sub RC other than 0, it means you do not have the authorization. So I will simply write if size sub RC not equal to zero. You can write N E also. It is totally your wish. I will go for N if. And we will give a error message. I will create a message into the message class. I will go to SC91 transaction code. And we will go for change. Suppose I will give the authorization. You author, I will give a message. Suppose, sorry, I will give a message. You are not authorized to create the records or we can say insert the records. Similarly, I will create other message also you are not authorized to update the order number. And similarly, I will go for, you are not authorized to delete the order number. I will go for save. So we created three messages. I will give the message. So firstly, I will give as a part of insert message we'll go for error message zero zero nine and what is our message class zmsg now same logic i will write as a part of now this update also delete also at the starting itself this is our update database operation sorry I will copy this code because authorization object is same to say we are just going for different activities. Now for change the value is 0 2 
and the message is one zero. Yes, one zero. Now I will go for third. We'll go for delete. I'll check the radio buttons again. It should not be the case that I did something wrong. This is our 11. I'll check the syntax. Now this field is 06 because 06 is for the delete. If I will see, yes, 06 is for the delete. We'll go for check. If I will run, Insert. Okay. Delete is second radio, but sorry, it's a mistake at my end. It should be 06 because second radio button is delete. It is 11. It is 02 because that is update. It is E010. I will activate. So what is the summary of this particular video? In this video, firstly, I explained about fourth, fifth and sixth step, but it is totally a SAP basis or administrator responsibility. Your task as a technical person is to just share the name of the authorization object to the SAP basis person. It's a SAP basis person responsibility that they will simply, simply go for authorization object. They will create a particular role with the help of transaction for PFCG. They will assign the oath object to that particular role. And then that role will be assigned to the user. Now, along with this, now you know one more point also. Suppose I will go for simple example. Now here, you need to tell SAP basis person also that this user, suppose uh, my ID is there, I'm only authorized for insert and update. Then in that case, SAP basis person will only only go for 0, 1 and 0, 2 value. SAP basis person will not give you 06 value because you are not allowed for delete. Suppose if you are allowed for all three database operation, then SAP basis person will provide you for 010206 all three. Suppose you are only only authorized for insert. So in this SAP basis person will go for this authorization object, but that person will only only give you the rights of 01. That person will not give you for 02 and 06. That's why authorization is very, very critical task. And anyways, it's told because the basis person major task, they are only handling these kinds of activities. And it is very, very critical in the projects. So we have to tell also that this is the oath object. And I want rights for this activity. If you think, yes, you are eligible for all three, then that basis person will give you 010206 all three. Because we have 010206. It is anyways in this authorization object. Now, if you have only rights for 01, that person will only give you 01. If you are only rights for 02, that person will only give for 02. If you are for 06, that person will only give you for 06. Now, after that, we come on to the seventh step. In the seventh step, that is totally a technical person responsibility because we need to write the code. With the help of authority check statement, we will check that are you eligible or do you have the rights for that particular authorization object? So what is the syntax? Authority check object, name of the authorization object. After ID, you will pass the name of the authorization field. After field, you will pass the value, value, what the value you are eligible. Because you are going for insert, you are going for update, you are going for delete. Then we simply put the message. In the message class, we gave the three messages. 
if psi sub r c not zero, do not have insert right. If psi sub r c not equal to zero, do not have delete right. If psi sub r c not equal to zero, we do not have the rights for that. We do not. We are not authorized to update the records. Now, in the next video, we will understand in that debugging mode because maximum people will think now this auth object we have not assigned to this user. So how how we will check the result? That process I will let you know because I will never never tell how you can create role through PFCG, how you can assign because this is most critical. And if I will show, people will definitely hamper the system. So I will not explain how to create a role and how to assign the oath object to that role because anyways, we are not doing these kinds of things in the project. So that's it in this video. Thank you.